Welcome to video 4 in my intro to HTML video series. In this video I'm going to talk about some useful elements for formatting text. I'm going to talk about headlines, paragraphs, strong, and emphasis. I want to start off by talking about headlines because headlines are what draw you into an article and help lead you around your content on a web page. Every web page should use headlines appropriately and use them to your advantage. Now headlines are good for several reasons. First of all, for those who are not visually impaired, when we scan down a web page, headlines help to introduce different sections. They're bigger type than everything else. They stand out. They've got contrast. So they attract our attention. When we scan an article, we look for headlines to see what a section is about and kind of determine what we want to read and what we don't want to read. It's called scanning, scanning an article. Every page, I shouldn't say every page, but most pages should have an H1. An H1 is the largest, most important heading. It's going to look kind of like this. I'm going to go over to Notepad++ and show you some code. I've got a basic skeleton here with a bunch of text content in there. This is the text that you see in this article about Chris Cook and his not guilty verdict, lucky guy. Now there are some headings in here. The first heading that you see on this page is the one right up here that says Star Tribune Vikings slash NFL. This heading right here tells us what page we're on and everything on this page is going to be related to Star Tribune Vikings slash NFL. So I'm going to put that content in here. Star Tribune and I believe there's a little vertical pipe in there too. There we go. So this is going to be our main headline for the page. It tells us that everything on this page is related to that topic. Now if you want to make it an H1, you're going to put it in between H1 tags. Oops, HA. H1. So H1 opens, H1 closes. This says that this entire page is all about Star Tribune, Vikings slash NFL. Okay? So that's our first headline. When we look at the page, we should see that. It should stand out. It should be really bold. So if I save this, save it, run it in the browser, you can see right up here, Star Tribune, Vikings, NFL, stands out. It's really bold. It's the first thing we see, and it sums up what the whole page is about. Headlines have a hierarchy. In other words, they have an order to them. Some are more important than others. The H1, as I said, sums up what the entire page is about. Now this page might be broken down into several sections. We might have an article about Chris Cook. We might have another article in there about uh, the Vikings cutting all sorts of players, getting ready for free agency season. We might have all kinds of things in there, all related to that Vikings NFL topic. All of those sections, subsections that are sections of this page, should be opened up with an H2. And H2 is the secondary heading. It looks like this. H2, closing H2 tag. Now, this section, not guilty verdict, proves Chris Cook, or provides Chris Cook with a chance. This introduces the rest of this article. This article, this specific article, is about this topic. And this topic about Chris Cook is part of this topic, Viking slash NFL. Make sense? So you've got uh, a hierarchy for your headlines. You've got most important, and then that subject, Vikings NFL, is broken up into many other sections. Here's one section right here. It's the Chris Cook one, Chris Cook section. Now, this Chris Cook section might be broken up into several different sections. Maybe I want to have a smaller subsection here of this article. If I want to have a subsection of this article, I might open it with an H3 because it's a subsection of that article that opened with an H2. So I'm going to make this one
court date on Thursday. And it'll talk, this section just talks about that Thursday court date. Make sense? So this H3 is subordinate to this because that court date on Thursday is part of the larger article, which is the Chris Cook's whole entire case. And that Chris Cook case is all part of that subject of Viking slash NFL. Make sense? So we've got a hierarchy for our headings. H1 is the most important heading on the page. H2 is the secondarily most important heading on the page. And that breaks up sections on that H1 page. And H3 breaks that H2 article into sections, subsections of that article that's all related to one content. Now we can go all the way on down to H6. More than likely, you're not going to get any deeper than H4. You may find a reason, but um, more than likely you won't. Always use the headings appropriately. Use them according to their hierarchy. You should only have one H1 per page. A page might have several H2s. It breaks up different sections of that page. Each of those sections might have several H3s that section off that smaller section of the entire page. Okay, that's enough for, for headings for now, headlines for now. Let's move on to paragraph. The paragraph tag, I've talked about that before briefly, and I want to describe it a little bit more. The purpose of a paragraph tag is to define a chunk of text that is all conceptually related. It's all directly related to itself. A paragraph might be um, one to five sentences, maybe even more, but they're all groups of text that are related to one main theme. What the paragraph tag is going to do is it's going to break up the text and give you a visual space above and below where you put the paragraph tag. So I put the paragraph tag around this opening paragraph here. The Vikings quarterback said he learned from his trial and vowed to control his actions in the future. Surrounded that in a paragraph. If I save this and refresh it in the browser, you'll see right here a new paragraph was created. Now I'm going to move down a little further, insert another paragraph where a paragraph was required by the text. Oops, is that correct? Insert another paragraph, close it. Insert another paragraph, close it. Insert another paragraph, close it. I'm going to put paragraph tags in wherever I have a break in the text according to what the Star Tribune did. I save it, I'm going to go and refresh it, and you can see those chunks show up. Okay, so that's headlines and paragraphs. This is kind of what it looked like on the uh, Star Tribune web page. Headlines and paragraphs. Now I want to move on to two more elements. These are the last elements I'm going to talk about in this article or in this video. I want to talk about strong and M. Strong. Strong is going to visually make your text bold. Generally in text, when you make the text bold, it's because it is important more important than the surrounding text. So if you wanted to find some piece of text in here that should be more important, maybe you want to make the the author's name more important. You could do something like this. Surround it in the strong tags. Maybe you find a piece of really juicy info in here maybe he smiled widely and maybe that's really important to the article to the meaning of the article I'll surround that in strong tags you want to use strong tags only when that text should be more important and adds more meaning to the article more meaning to the text we probably don't have any really good reasons to use strong in this article. 
but there's two examples. That's what it looks like. It just makes the text bold. Now I want to talk about emphasis. Emphasis is used to emphasize text. When you use uh, emphasis in a text is when you want to change the meaning of a sentence based on where you place the emphasis. I'm not going to use this uh, article here to demonstrate emphasis. I'm going to add some text down at the bottom and separate it from the rest. Just add a little bit of white space in there so we can see it more clearly. I'm going to write a sentence that says Kittens are cute, but I still hate them. Now, depending on where you put the emphasis in that sentence, it can mean something a little bit different. If I said, kittens are cute, but I still hate them, it has a slightly different semantic meaning than kittens are cute, but I still hate them. So if you wanted to put the emphasis on the cute, surround the cute in m tags. If you want to put the emphasis on kittens and not on cute, surround the kittens in m tags. So what m does is it uh, puts a little voice in our head that emphasizes that text to give the sentence a slightly different meaning. And here's what it looks like in the browser when you emphasize. Oops, let me just uh, put that in a paragraph so it's a little bit more visible. There we go. Kittens right here is emphasized, so it looks italic. Are cute, but I still hate them. If I move the emphasis over where it was before, kittens are cute, but I still hate them. it's going to put the italics on cute instead of on kittens. That's the end of this video. So to sum up, remember your headline hierarchy. Paragraphs should be used to separate content from one another, text content from one another that is contextually linked to one another. And emphasis and strong should be used to pull out important parts of the text and add different meaning to it.